Hey Ashley, great to have you with me and Natalie on today's One More Round show. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Now, Ashley, you are a motivational speaker. You're an advocate. You're also a mission collaborator, PR, marketing and development collaborator. So it's a lot that you seem to do, but you are very passionate about what you do, aren't you? Yeah. I am. Yeah. I, I, you know, I once heard the term uh, multi-passionate entrepreneur and I definitely am that. And, you know, it's funny for years I tried to like just pick a niche and pick one thing, but I am fully embracing that I love to do a million different things, whether it's different jobs, different volunteer opportunities. I just, I love to stay busy. So yes, I do a lot. It's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. That's one word that you said there that always makes me smile because it always sounds so different to how we say it in England. You guys say niche. And we say niche. Niche, so I know, I know. Pick a niche, I don't know. Niche sounds nicer. nicer. <laughs> yeah, definitely, but um, really loving, obviously, seeing what you've achieved so far. You're a massive advocate. You go into lots of colleges and schools, and you really uh, help shape, you know, the future generation. Uh, and that's always exciting, you know, to see. Yeah, you know, I, I really have a passion talking to uh, students and young professionals, um, namely because as a motivational speaker, I share some of my greatest hardships, which happened to me at a very young age from, you know, 14 years old to about 20 years old, I had a really hard time. And it's really unfortunate because that's the time when you should be focusing on your career and your skills and really developing, you know, your lifelong qualities. But I, I was just sidetracked because of so many issues that I was facing. So. I really enjoy speaking with students. You know, the, the issues I talk about are very relatable. And I also have a really strong after story of how I was able to really create my success from networking and building a resume and getting involved in different things and, um, you know, how they can start young and really start doing that to set themselves up for success. It's mm -hmm. good. So what I want to do is I want to ask you a couple of questions. I just really want you to think on your feet here. And uh, I always find this fascinating, but I, I always think that it's so important that, you know, we're all a brand, you know, individuals are now have their own personal brand and how we build connection and we build rapport. You know, it's important that we put our personality at the forefront of what we do. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure that you agree with that. And uh, just want to ask you a couple of questions, you know, and let's see what, it, what, it, what answers you give us. So, Ashley, if you can define yourself in one word. <clears throat> <clears throat> ambitious okay introvert or extrovert a perfect mix of both you a morning person or a night owl both <laughs> oh boy you're gonna have to be a little more decisive here. I, you know if i if i didn't have to sleep i i wouldn't <laughs> but morning i like i love the mornings i love the sunrise <laughs> is that what you feel like you're most productive I do, yeah. Yeah, I feel very inspired in the mornings. Okay, audio books or paperback? Paperback. Mm. What's your favorite social media platform? I would say Facebook. Yeah, I think Facebook has a lot to offer and I, I definitely have the most connections on there. Um, maybe it's a, maybe it's a, indication of my age but facebook was like the social media platform when all of my friends started getting onto social media so yeah i like facebook the most i see the most results from it and i get the most engagement and i can connect with more people on there nice and last question you're obviously a motivational speaker who is the one person that you would love to hear speak Ooh. um You know, I, I don't think I can, I don't think I could name like a, a well-known person. I like hearing real people speak. I like hearing real people's stories. So I think just your average everyday people just sharing where they come from and, you know, how their stories made who they are. So oh, nice. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. So Ashley, I've um, now got a few questions for you. Um, you can be as open and as honest and as laid back as you like with these. Um, so when you hear the words one more round, what does that make you think of? You know, um, I guess I would have to say 
not um, not be willing, not being willing to succumb to defeat. Um, I think there's so many moments in our life where we could feel defeated and give up. Um, but I think that those moments are always going to be there. So to me, the idea of one more round is is not being okay with that and always wanting to go forth and not be defeated by challenges and hardships and, and just trying to win in every situation. Brilliant. Okay. So can you give us one specific example of when you have gone that one more round? Uh, you know, it's to pick one that's really challenging. I mean, I, I feel like my whole life has been testing me in this way from, you know, I mentioned that I speak to college students, you know, I was a victim of domestic violence at a young age. And, and, you know, the idea of being a victim, I was very much defeated all the time. And even when I left, I was very broken and defeated. And, you know, just with that experience, for example, so many victims find, have a very hard time coming out of it and they remain in that victim mode forever or they accept the defeat and they struggle. And, you know, for me, I really wanted to come out of that and, and uh, be much stronger. And I had heard this great quote at the time, which I really think like changed everything for me. And it was the greatest revenge is massive success. So I said, I have to pick myself up. I have to keep going. I have to get back to college because I had dropped out because of the violence. So you know, I said, I got to go back to school, get involved, rebuild my character and just, you know, try to go one more round so that I could win this time because I had lost so many battles and you know, so that's probably one example where I really had to pick myself up and get on my feet and, and just kind of keep going. Brilliant. So when things have been difficult um, or you make a bad call or a bad decision, what, how, how have you got a, a, strategy, a strategy where you, you use to sort of bounce back from that? Or is it just what, what do you do? You know, I think, I think I, you know, I hate to say it, but I think I've, I've lived enough um, where I've always realized that I've been able to get myself out of hard times. And, you know, when I was younger, I saw a lot of moments as failures. And now that I'm getting older, I just see it as, you know, a learning opportunity. It's not a failure. You learn what didn't work. You learn what isn't meant to be. And you yeah. just keep going. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've, I've always kind of had this little phrase that just pops into my mind. I always just say, I will figure it out. And sometimes I have no idea how or what that even means in that moment. But, you know, when stuff happens, I say, I'll figure it out. And I just keep telling myself that. And somehow I do. So I think you just have to have a lot of faith in your abilities and in your own strength to get past challenges and hard times. Yeah. It's funny with you saying you have a little um, thing that you always say, I, I have one as well. And it, mine comes from my grandma and I use it all the time. And through my life growing up and things, um, she always used to say it. And it, mine was, it'll always come out in the wash. Oh, nice. I always used to say it from a little girl and, and I've just continued that. So it's funny how you've got a little saying because uh, it must be, a, must be a woman thing. It must be. Yeah. Well, it works, you know, your, your inner voice. You can either bully yourself and be your worst critic yeah. or you can really empower yourself to keep going and go one more round. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So tell me in the audience uh, something about you that we, we need to know. Uh, wow, um, something that you need to know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's like the interesting fact question. Tell us something interesting about you. Um, actually it could be, it could be something that you uh, are working on yeah. uh, right now. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, I'm really, so I've always had a passion for writing and, um, during my, some of my most difficult times, I've always written in a journal. I've been keeping a journal since I was like 14 years old. So some of my, you know, um, most challenging stories and experiences, I've just kind of vented in my journal. So I've always loved to write. Um, but really over the last few years, I've learned just through social media that by writing and sharing and being vulnerable, um, I've really been able to connect with a lot of people. So I'm excited to say that I'm working on a book right now. Um, actually, this uh, past week was the three-year anniversary of my mother's death. 
Um, and I'm, I'm writing a book in her honor. It's kind of chronicling my experience with her and the lessons I've learned about time and life and appreciating what you have. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. And, um, you know, I have high hopes that I can get this book into as many households as possible and keep her name and her spirit alive. And, you know, I, I really, I do a lot every single day with my mother in mind. So, you know, that's something I think that's really important. I, I've learned so much that, you know, time is short and opportunities are fleeting and, you know, people can be gone in the blink of an eye. And, um, you know, I really make the most of life because of that. So yeah. that's, that's something I think people should know. Yeah, that's, that's so lovely to hear. Um, so who do you know that we should all know and that we should maybe possibly get on one more round? Ooh, um, who inspires hmm. you? It doesn't have to be anyone really big, but somebody that you, you may have worked alongside or, or have had a connection with and thought, Gosh, yeah, you you are going places. I know normally, Ashley, you would say me, but you obviously can't, yeah. you can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I uh, I work closely with a lot of people here in Massachusetts uh, at the Alzheimer's Association, and there is a gentleman um, who has been diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's, and he's only like maybe in his fifties. And despite uh, the toll that it's taking on him, um, it is amazing how involved he is. Like he has to read his speeches, but he speaks everywhere as his mind is going, as his faculties are going. And he's really, um, just really inspirational. And I lost my mom to Alzheimer's and I can't imagine her have, um, having been so strong. So he's an amazing speaker and he's a really incredible person. And uh, I think he'd be great on this show, how he finds the strength to embrace such a, a life-shattering diagnosis and disease, and yet keeps pushing forward and speaking about it, um, you know, even though it's very challenging for him. So I could send you his name. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Thank you. Well, thanks for answering those, Ashley. Yeah, Ashley, I guess I have one, one question, just obviously, because I, I know you fairly well, and uh, I want to make sure that we're getting the, the most out of you. I know that you obviously lost your, your mom and you've, you've been through different challenges in your life with domestic violence. You know, a lot of people in your situation do turn to drugs and, and yeah. drink and, and do end up with a problematic, you know, you know, life. What, what stopped you from going down that path? I think it really goes back to what we're talking about today. I didn't want, like, for example, with the domestic violence, I didn't want him to win, mm -hmm. right? I didn't want him to win the round and me lose and him find out that I'm struggling years later. Um, and I never want a bad situation to win, you know? So for me, it's always um, making the decision to want to come out of these situations as the winner, you know? So it's kind of funny, like when I left my abusive, you know, former partner, and I used to say, well, if he does ever see my face or hear my name, it better be because I'm doing amazing things. And I want him to know that I finally won this time. And, you know, I hope he sees me on the front page of the paper. And like, this is the stuff I've been working on. Like when I finally was on the front page of the paper one day for sharing my story, I was like, yes, like I did it, you know, but I think you just, you have to want to win and not, you know, like I said, succumb to defeat or, or find yourself just playing the victim mode. And um, you're right. Like a lot of people do, they they drink, they turn to drugs, they're depressed, and it's very easy to want to feel that way. But you have to keep remembering the bigger picture and really what you want from your life. Whether you want to struggle and be unhappy, or whether you want to wildly succeed and overcome, and and really just be stronger because of it. So awesome, yeah. love it. That's so so inspiring to us and to many others. I'm sure are going to hear hear this. It's lovely. Ashley, how do people find out more about you and, and how do they connect with you? Sure. So I am on almost every social media platform you can imagine. Um, I, you know, it's a necessary evil, I think, in business, but it's, it's great to connect with a lot of people. Um, my website is ashleybendixon.com. Um, I'm very excited. It's a brand new website. So I've got a lot of great stuff on there from, you know, great free content and blog posts. I'm launching a podcast of my own. 
You can learn more about the book that I mentioned and get on the waiting list if you want to hear about it. I'll send little sample chapters to you. Um, but I would say just go to my website or find me on social media, Ashley Ben Dixon, everywhere. <laughs> nice. And just finally, is there, is there anything that's kind of uh, been on your mind or something that you've discovered like in the last few weeks that you feel is a poignant message for, for people to hear? Um, I think it's just important um, every single day to wake up and to rise and to remind yourself of what your goals are. Like I said, I write and one of the things that I do every day, every morning I wake up and I set goals for the day and every night I write out my dream life and it really keeps me, uh, you know, attached to what my goals and my big dreams are. Um, you know, this has been an especially challenging month, the past few weeks, remembering my mother's death and you know, eerily, her sister just passed away last night. So I just lost an aunt this week. And just, you know, reminding myself that there's so much beautiful stuff in the world and there's so much to still live for and be happy about and smile about. So, you know, I think we're always going to be challenged. I think there's always going to be um, another worst moment ever in our life. You know, over and over, these moments will still keep coming up, but you have to just stay connected to your goals and what makes you happy and make the most of every single day. Yeah, and just and just to say, Ashley, you know, obviously, I I knew that your auntie was sick, though I, I didn't know that she passed away last night. But I think it says a lot about you to still follow through, to still show up, even yeah. when you know. And I would totally understand if you had to postpone or cancel, but you haven't. You know, you've done what you know is true because you know other people will really benefit yeah. from your message and what you've got to say. Yeah, well, like I said, you got to wake up every day and keep going. And, you know, last night, you want to talk about, about, like, drama last night. So I'm out grabbing a bite to eat. I saw my abusive ex cooking in the kitchen at the restaurant. I haven't seen him in, like, nine years. And uh, I was like, really? Like, he hasn't been in my hometown since. And then five minutes later, I got the call that my aunt had passed. And I just, like, just wanted to start screaming in the middle of a restaurant. Like, you know, <laughs> what is going on? Did but, you think? Know, just... Sorry. Go on. Carry on. Yeah, no, go ahead. Good. No, did you stay in the restaurant while, did you see him and continue to stay or did you, did you? Um, I kind of wrap things up pretty quickly. Uh, you know, the person I was with, he's like, do you want to go right now? And I'm like, no, it's okay. Just we'll finish. I'm going to finish my glass of wine <laughs> and then we'll, we'll move on. So yeah, it was, it was kind of eerie, but you know, I, as strange as it was seeing him, it was, it was kind of like seeing a ghost, you know, like a blast from the past, but I, I feel so much stronger than him. So surprisingly, I felt very strong in that moment and okay seeing him there. Amazing. Well, thank you so, so much, Ashley. It's been absolutely a pleasure to talk to you today. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you for having me. I think it's a great show and I look forward to watching your other guests and, and being inspired by them. Thank you. Thank you.